All right, love, let's get started. So here we go. All right, everybody, welcome to the National Arts Club presentation along with the great NYVR of art and VR. It is a pleasure to be here with you. My name is Lev Polyakov, AKA Lev Poe on Twitter, L-E-V-P-O. And here is the important thing that you guys have to know. Number one, number one, and this is a microphone. Oh, we lost you. <laughs> the really important, the really important extreme thing for you guys to know is that the National Arts Club is one of the greatest institutions of all time, and you better support it. Go into the chat. You're going to find out a lot of information about it there. And I love all of you here. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter. I am so grateful for DJ for being here. This is it. I am out. Blah, blah, blah. Take care. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Welcome everyone to NYVR in the metaverse. I'm really thrilled to see everyone here. And uh, this is kind of a dream come, come true for me. Um, so let's get started. Um, we have a, an amazing night. This is me. And uh, first, I just want to thank Lev uh, for streaming tonight. Actually, Jimmy's streaming tonight also. Uh, all of our partners at the National Arts Club uh, for their support. And then, of course, all of our wonderful presenters um, who have been coming to dress rehearsals for the past two weeks, uh, trying to nail down all the tech involved. And uh, I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, it is still early days for us, uh, but we're going to try and keep the event as smooth and on schedule as possible. So here is the list of everyone that is lined up. Uh, all of their information is on the meetup page also, and we will be uh, posting the whole presentation um, after the fact. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get videos of uh, the artist's work, uh, but we will post those videos and uh, definitely check out uh, the videos because the, the pictures uh, do it a little bit justice, but it's really cool to see it in, in action. So to start the pre presentation, I want to talk a little bit about art and where it was and where it's going. So. We'll start with a little bit of a trivia question. Does anybody know what this painting sold for? This was the most expensive painting ever sold. Raise your hand if you think you know. Darcy, why don't you take a guess? Mm, any other guesses? 250. 200 million, 250 million, getting closer. Well, the real answer is, oh, it skipped, hold on a second, $450 million, okay? So art is big business. And the question is, when will digital art get there? So, Photography started back in the 1800s. This is one of the first pictures actually ever taken uh, to show humans. And the most expensive painting or picture ever sold uh, was 2011 and it was $4 million. What's interesting to me though, is that, oh, two seconds, so this, digital painting called the forever rose sold in 2018 for a million dollars this is one of the first digital works of art sold and it was sold using cryptocurrency and i think that's a, a huge enabler for this industry is that with blockchain and cryptocurrency our digital um imprints can be managed and we can understand what is the first print and it can therefore retain much more value. Beyond this, AR and VR is here to stay and there's going to be a huge demand for three-dimensional art in all different industries. And all of our presenters here are the trailblazers 
and they're vital for the whole AR and VR ecosystem to expand because you are the folks that are going to be making the content uh, that lands in our headsets. So thank you to everyone that is here. Okay, so with that, let's get going. Lev, again, thank you very much. We'll get right into our first presenter, which is Beatrice. Please give her a hand and uh, she will show her, her work. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, hi. So um, I created a prototype for an augmented reality applied to the classics of literature, and I picked El Quixote, which is one of the masterpieces of the Spanish literature. With the augmented reality app, it has a few buttons to display, first of all, some information about the books, such as the literary period, what country it comes from, information about the author, and yes, some of the features that's described in the, in, on the slides. Uh, in addition to displaying information, the app also displays with animation some of the um, most famous scenes of the book. And, uh, and just for fun, so this is some of the scenes that we displayed with, 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 with uh, the augmented reality. And uh, in addition, and just for fun, El Quixote, I was able to bring the Quixote in the room, in the real world, where I was just for fun in the next, uh, the next slide, please. Yes. So that's it. That's my prototype of the augmented reality app. Yes. Awesome. Th thank you so much. And thank you for your time and taking a look at it. Thank you. Awesome, great job, Beatrice. Okay, next we have uh, Bracy and team, come on down. Hey, I don't know if the team, I don't know if the team made it. So unfortunately, the team- Actually, Elaine, Elaine oh, is right there. Excellent. I'm here, but I'm having huge Wi-Fi issues. So I don't even know if you can hear me. Well, so Bracey, I'll see I like, the, I like the ghetto. That's that's what's important. <laughs> yeah. At least you showed up. Um, excellent. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Bracey. Uh, uh, this is Elena. I'm Elena. Uh, um, uh, uh, we have been working uh, with uh, some other people. We have uh, a fantastic developer named uh, Soul that works with us. Uh, we've been working on uh, the Menagerie. Um, this is something that got accepted into the Cannes Film Festival or VR XR Festival earlier this year. Yeah, Cannes um, Film Festival XR Hackathon. XR Hackathon, that's that's it. So uh, we've been working on the idea for a platform menagerie flow through, uh, uh, flow through moments together. We're calling virtual experiences moments um, in, in this context. And the idea is we need a better VR platform that allows us to discover content and make that process seamless and allow us to do it together and make it easy for, hey, if I found something, I found something, why don't you come with me? And uh, uh, the process of going to uh, share that thing doesn't actually take a lot of time. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's unpredictable, isolating, rigid, full of friction. Uh, we were we were wondering what could you do if you made it a very seamless friction free process. Um, part of the idea of the structure of this was to work with artists to create these rooms within the context of the platform, which really means kind of. Uh, uh, kind of simplifying what a room needs to be, which is basically a short form VR content. So. Uh, so instead of making these vast worlds, uh, we really focus on making just key moments. You step into a moment, and that also allows you to recontextualize all the information within it. You got music, you got art, you can bring in every type of medium that can fit in VR into one spot that you can discover. Um, so yeah, this is uh, uh, this is our team, and I wish we had the chance to show you what it looks like because it's a lot of fun. It's multiplayer world world jumping world phasing it's it's fun yeah multiplayer uh, experience for building worlds and discovering worlds yeah 
So uh, thanks, thanks for your time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Great job. Thank you so much. All right. Next we have Carrie. Come on down. Sounds really interesting. Sorry, I'm trying to get there. Oh, there we go. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. Um, hi, everybody. So I just want to say I'm so honored to be here amongst um, so many other XR creatives that I greatly admire. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, David's presentation later. Um, I think the, the topic that we're on tonight, the intersection of art and VR, really positions us um, to connect and inspire and in, you know what's currently a, a very globally challenging year um, and this is really how i've approached my process and um, particularly in the last year so i'm a multidisciplinary artist i do visual art music poetry um, vr and ar um, so the the slides that you'll see behind me are just stills some of my process um, one is a still for my music video the sculptures um, I create an oculus medium and I, I do try to um, incorporate those across all um, medias I create those in oculus medium I also work in tilt brush um, I've tried to also work with um, AR filters and 360 video as that's like the most accessible um, to people that don't have the headsets um, and then also currently working on creating a more accessible 3D print that can be um, collectible. Um, so with my, my recent uh, Erase music video, which you see like one of the stills on there, um, I created the, I think it's the one where the, the face is the largest. Um, I created an AR filter first that's accessible for free on Instagram and Facebook, and then uh, actually use that in the music video filmed inside of it because I wanted people to feel like they can step inside the music video and, and be a part of it. Um, really looking for ways to uh, connect with people while we're so separated. Um, I've been working with a Quest and virtual desktop and a VR PC for the last year. Um, for any artists that are watching in the audience that maybe haven't stepped into VR AR yet, I just wanted to say a note about my two favorite uh, mediums to draw on. The tilt brush is very much like drawing sculpture, like in the air. Um, an Oculus medium is, is similar to real life sculpture, except there's no gravity and you can change the scale as much as you want. Um, I'm currently working on a solo exhibition for the Venice Biennial, which is a lifelong dream uh, for me. And I'm super humbled to have um, Dara Dan Duran as the exhibition producer. Um, if any companies that you know of might be interested, please uh, let uh, have them email me at hello at carryable.com. We'll be having a pitch deck ready in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then forgive me, I dropped my notes. <laughs> um, and if you'd like to check out the AR filter or my music videos or anything, please feel free, free to check me out on Instagram. I have it listed on the slide. Um, I'm also doing a weekly chat um, on AR and XR with um, Regina um, Harsani um, in Clubhouse. And then I'll also be doing office hours for um, emerging artists or pretty much like an ask me anything on Mondays. So in closing, uh, with the gifts of creativity and our access to tech, I feel like we have a calling to uplift and inspire. Um, and as I end this, I'll just note the lyrics to my latest song, which I feel like touches on this. Um, Reaching hands towards those in the quicksand, I saved myself too. In me, I see you. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you, DJ. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, if everyone could mute themselves during the presentation, that would be great. Thank you. All right, next uh, we got Darcy. Come on up. Thank you. Hi, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. So um, thank you very much for inviting me. This is really the most exciting thing I've seen happening in this uh, field for a while, combining a real art 
uh, club, which is a very famous club, uh, and uh, VR. I was amazed to think that that was even happening. It's so great. Um, I've been in the field a really long time, uh, making art with computers uh, in the labs over the years. And um, I always wanted to be able to paint in three dimension, and finally we got that technology. So I paint it with a tilt brush. Yeah, Darcy, uh, just step forward so you're on the, the gray dot there. Okay. Better? Yep. Better? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, I have, uh, we have a couple of virtual worlds. These are two billboard size paintings painted in tilt brush, and then take them out into Photoshop uh, and create paintings out of them. Uh, I'm very interested in having physical objects as well as virtual objects. Uh, afterward, you're all invited to visit my two worlds that have art exhibitions. There is a portal around here somewhere that you can enter. When you enter um, the more traditional art world, you have to go outside the gallery to find the portal to get back to the, for the, to the um, art exhibition that we created for um, Burning Man online last year, VRCVR. These are additional tilt brush paintings uh, on canvas, and uh, I print them out myself, usually on very large scale. The reason I got started making virtual worlds was because I had a, this picture was exhibited in an art exhibition in California. It's about, um, oh, it's about so big by so big, and people would go up to it and stand in front of it and ask me if they could walk inside. So the ribs of this painting are actually a 3D uh, light sculpture painted with tilt brush. So then I thought, well, we'll see what we can do. And so we created uh, opportunities for people to come and actually walk inside of these and now fly around inside as avatars inside of these 3D light sculptures. I have been able to take the... Um, these light sculptures that I paint, uh, because when you paint them, you're actually creating a Unity model. You can take that out into your onto your phone as an AR object, place it in the real world anywhere, and then you can use that to create artworks on two dimensions, taking snapshots of three dimensional objects in the real world. And it turns out that your paintings on canvas retain the feel of a, of a 3D object because you have photographed a 3D object. And it's a way that I'm experimenting with combining abstract painting with realism. And so this one that you see next to this um, bunch on the right, the picture on the, my left, uh, that's blue is actually uh, one of my 3D light sculptures. It's about so big, placed in a venue, not unlike this one, but in a dark club in New York where um, a group of uh, tech people were meeting and we were hanging out. And if you look closely at these paintings, they in, initially when you look at them, I hope, they look like it's like an abstract painting. But as you look closer, you see the space sets up differently and you start to see real objects in them. Great. So I look forward to seeing you all later tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. So just to reiterate, Darcy is going to be hosting the after party, uh, um, and the portals are in the back on the right by the bar. Um, so after we get through all the presentations, we can go uh, to her worlds and uh, go fly through the art, which is really, really super cool. Thank you so much uh, for yeah. hosting the, the after party, Darcy. Oh, no problem. You can all find me on um, uh, my, my use my name. So DarcyGerbarg.com is my email. And Instagram is at Gerbarg, so I'm easy to find. And there are videos posted there as well. Thank you so Thank much. You. And, I, and I also want to give a special shout out to Darcy's husband, Gene, who's over on the left there. Uh, he was a mm. huge help in setting up Altspace and getting the, the display and the microphone. Uh, so really a huge shout out to Gene. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You the man, Gene. All right, uh, next we got David and team also. Um, yeah, team also, whoops, let me 
turn around to kiss everybody. Um, hey, so yeah, I'm David Goshfeld. Uh, this is uh, Kevin Lipson, Alex Chafee, and Brendan Bradley is playing coy over in the corner over there. Um, for those of you who don't know us, uh, um, Alex and Kevin and I have been working for several years on uh, how we use VR to make theater. And uh, this summer we connected with uh, Brendan Bradley, who's a, a very talented actor and producer and all around force of nature, um, to th start looking at how we can address the crisis that's facing the theater community um, because of the pandemic. Um, Kevin? Uh, I mean, that really effectively sums it up, right? We're here to show you some pictures. We put together a production in October of a play that Brendan wrote. We were looking for something that qualified in, uh, in physical space as, as close to unproducible. And so Brendan had this 10 minute play that took place uh, in the middle of an ocean on a boat with three people and a live rabbit. And then we felt that effectively did what we needed to do. Um, this is a picture of the first version of the play, which is to say we did a couple of modalities. We wanted to do this as a presentation for our friends in the physical theater space to say like, hey, here are some interesting options that are, are uh, let's say, more interesting than most of what we're seeing on Zoom. Uh, but we wanted to make sure they saw at least a small range. And so we did uh, half the piece, as you saw in the last slide, was 3D avatars for uh, hubs standards. And uh, this other half was done as a composited video uh, using OBS Ninja and OBS and uh, placing the three actors who were in different coasts, uh, at least two different coasts, on uh, the same boat in the middle of the fake ocean. So the whole point of this, of this exploration is to sh be able to show theater companies that VR is a tool that's accessible to them because um, you really don't need a lot of technical knowledge how to be able to start making this work in hubs and that it can be accessible to their audiences because hubs runs in almost any browser so um but of course theater all theater creators want to make lots of different kinds of things so we wanted to show that it's not all just uh avatars you know low fidelity avatars there's lots of different ways you can use this technology to tell your stories um so please uh Yes, this is a, that's just another view of the show. Um, the other thing we wanted to say is that uh, in our first slide, you saw a map. We were none of us were in the same place ever at all during this entire process. We from pre-production through to the actual performances, uh, we were all over the country and able to do this entirely virtually. And of course, our audiences were virtual as well. So um, please. Uh, if you are at all interested in finding out more about what we're doing in coming to open rehearsals, um, uh, in uh, helping us uh, produce uh, another run of the show and some more work that we were wanting to produce, please get in touch. Uh, we are also having an open house in our theater in Hubs this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, all of this information is on our website, which is jensen.live. So you thank you very much uh, for having oh. me. Yeah. Thank you all. Um, thanks, CJ. Absolutely. Yeah. And definitely put it in a, a meetup comment uh, under the event so everyone can easily find it there, too. Oh, great idea. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Uh, next, we got my good friend, Mr. David Lobster. Come on down. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can. Good. Good. Okay. Uh, oh, how do I advance slides? Do I just tell you? I think I missed that part. Uh, yeah. Yep. I got you. Ooh, okay. Cool. Um, so maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay. So this is fine. Uh, hello. Um, thank you so much for doing this, DJ. I was very excited to see. That you were you were going to do this. We didn't we didn't have to miss out on art in uh, in New York. I miss New York. I haven't been around New York much since since COVID started. Um, I uh, I've been working on project for a very long time. It's been a very organic process. So there's kind of a lot of ways in to talk about it. Um, I I love making procedural art. I like I like coding things that 
that create generative imagery. I like spirographs and um, I like fractals and things like that. Uh, so it's just kind of something that I do to unwind after a long day of work in the VR salt mines. I'll sort of do the other VR salt mines of procedural <laughs> art. So this project started about um, uh, like five or six years ago when I sort of VR became a thing. Uh, and I basically wanted to create a space for myself to be able to release miniature projects within a bigger project. So instead of like having to really complete something big and put it out there as a whole thing, I wanted to be able to do um, little sketches and like little ideas to create spaces for people to share in some of what I feel when I'm making my procedural art. Um, so a lot of these spaces are, you know, just the result of me messing around, not being sure uh, what the output was going to be. Some of these experiences are uh, very much purpose built. Um, so they are, there's about 12 scenes in this project. Um, I had probably half of them in sort of various states of completion when I was approached by a, a ketamine clinic in uh, New York. Uh, and they wanted to test VR with their infusions. So they give people an IV drip of ketamine. It lasts about an hour. And they wanted to improve the set and setting because people were just sitting in these clinical environments. It wasn't very nice. And they're like, you know, there was there's an intuition there that this could help with the experience. Um, so I improved the experiences a bit, put it into a VR app that was meant to be very passive. Um, when you're getting an infusion of ketamine, you can't move around that much, really. It's like you don't want to deal with technology. So the only interaction was you click a button to switch from one scene to the next. Um, after that, uh, I was working with Tyler Pridgen on a project called Luxury Escapism that he, he founded. And I, I brought a lot of technology to for the second round of Luxury Escapism. Um, and that was a uh, underground spa in Dumbo. Um, we had a lot of activations that were... VR, we had a strobe light with a waterbed, we had ASMR, like all kinds of technology that was there to relax you. And it really worked. People came and they left just feeling much better. It was an amazing space. COVID killed it, sadly, about four months after it got started. Um, and we were doing well. We were breaking even and we might pick it up again at some point in the future. Um, is there one more slide? Mm, yeah. Sure. Okay, so this is, so I want to do more. I mean, this entire, like, I've been putting this entire thing together. I do have a few collaborators on the next slide. Um, but I want oh. to have, um, uh, uh, wait, I think you might have skipped one with the team. Uh, was there one before this one? No, you know what? It's oh. not in there for some reason. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, I put a three minute timer on so I wouldn't go over because I knew I could just, like, talk. Oh, there it is. Those. There it is. Uh, okay. So uh, if you, I don't know, you might know Jacob Marshall. He's kind of in the world. Deirdre Barrett came out with a series of um, Super Bowl ads for cores that involve dreaming. Um, she's a dream researcher. East Forest did most of the music. Um, and I have a lot of plans for the future. I want to collaborate with people. If you have ideas, I want to do multi-user stuff, biofeedback, um, and all kinds of other things. Uh, it's out now, visitationsvr.com. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, so I'm not sure if the crew from Guru is here. Is the crew here? Ah, yes. Carlos, come on over. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, so Gaspar actually... Gaspard was had a was not able to come, uh, but Carlos is gonna is here and he's gonna talk about uh, the amazing work that uh, Guru has been doing. Um, well, thank you guys for having me, DJ. Thank you so much for putting all of this together and keeping us in mind. Um, as uh, DJ mentioned, this is our founder, Gaspard. He's currently in France. Uh, so uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Carlos. I work um, alongside Gaspard at Garou. Uh, our platform is a high fidelity, multi-user VR platform that we hope to be uh, open source as we continue to develop it and be able to add more creators and a variety of different people onto the platform. Currently, we have about six or seven experiences that we have been able to fully integrate. Um, the way Garou started at the beginning was um, we created a 3D map 
of New York City and started to create all the big attractions like um, uh, the Museum of Natural History, the Guggenheim, the Oculus, uh, the Chrysler Building, um, all throughout New York and linking them through multiple levels using um, different pathways. Um, the, the thing we quickly realized is that we can bring a lot of people together and implement this multi-user aspect to some of the projects that have been laying around in people's hard drives and kind of bring that experience to a variety of different people. Um, the way that we saw this actually, DJ, if you could potentially go on to that. Thank you. Um, the, something that we quickly realized was uh, with the Guggenheim, we, we painstakingly, given Gaspard's um, background in architecture and our obsession with high fidelity, we created the Guggenheim, a one-to-one -one, uh, twin of it. And we thought that the middle of the structure was fairly empty. Um, and we did some digging and found this uh, contest that they were having called Contemplating the Void, very up to the Guggenheim standards. It was this concept that they wanted to fill that beautiful void, that middle section with a variety of different art. And we were fortunate enough to get in contact with Anish Kapoor and be able to put his design, which is called the Red Tornado, uh, into, the, into the void, right? Uh, we also uh, have... Um, Studio Bastielli, which is this beautiful structural angular pieces that go throughout different levels of the Guggenheim. So what we quickly realized is that this is, could be an ongoing experience, um, not just having the Guggenheim, which is a n nice structure, but filling it with a variety of different things that people could go in together and fully interact. Um, and we hope that we can continue to grow this, not only with um, art from artists, of course, but uh, bringing in different worlds like we've done so far and expanding the platform. Um, and I would love it if you guys, uh, well, we, we are on Unreal. So if any of you guys have um, any projects on Unreal, please feel free to reach out to us. You can just go to garou, G-A-R-O-U dot I-O. Um, we're also in our beta process and available on Steam. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, we would love for you guys to come in. Uh, the link for that is also on the website, and we would be more than happy to show you around the platform. Thank you guys for having me today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carlos. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, so definitely check out uh, Guru. It's on Steam, um, and it's really, really cool. You can go see it in VR. All right. Uh, so next, uh, we have Kevin Mack. Uh, so Kevin was, uh, I, th I think, one of the original gangster um, digital artists. I got connected with him um, many years after I saw his first work on on Gear VR, um, and it's it's really wonderful that now we can actually have him because he's on the West Coast. Have him uh, present his work at NYVR. So Kevin, thank you so much for uh, dropping in. Oh, I think you're muted. Hold on a sec. Thank you. There you go. So um, let's see. Uh, there's a slide here. Yes. So I wanted to talk about Anandala. It's my latest project. I've been working on it for a, a few years now. And it's um, it's kind of my lab. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a vast labyrinth uh, of... Uh, organic shapes and tunnels and uh, it's ever changing and evolving. It's a procedural structure. And the, uh, it's populated with artificial life creatures that I call blorts. Uh, that's a blort right up there uh, in the middle over the sky. This is the exterior of Anandala. You can see a little bit of the uh, structure of the labyrinth, just a little bit on the edges there. Uh, but inside the labyrinth are uh, a lot of blorts. There's 130 uh, unique creatures. Each one's different. Uh, they have a complex emergent behavior. They're, they're nothing like uh, humans, uh, but they are uh, expressive. They express themselves through their changing shapes and colors, and they have their own uh, language, which is, uh, it's a real language, but it's, a, it's an, an expressive language, more like whale song or bird song than than the, uh, the languages of, of humans. Um, so let's see if we can go to the next slide. Um, here's a, a blort uh, inside uh, the uh, labyrinth. And uh, it's, it's kind of 
uh, an interesting process. Uh, I wanted to make things that were uh, really alive, but also um, to try to model consciousness and self-awareness. So these creatures, their behavior is unpredictable. They all have their own personalities and and they have their own uh, intentions. And they, when they express themselves, they're they're composing the stuff. And uh, it's it's very simplistic compared to uh, the human brain. Uh, but they they're also uh, the the areas where it's very simple is that they don't have to struggle to survive. So they don't have to eat or sleep or they don't have to achieve anything. Uh, their only their sole purpose in life is to express themselves. Uh, creatively and interact with each other and with visitors so they're pretty good conversationalists and uh, they're fun to hang out with they're very friendly uh, and curious uh, and that's really um, that's what it's about for me I've been exploring this uh, they have all kinds of things they can uh, bestow visions on you now uh, these kind of uh, uh, ecstatic visions they have a, uh, a lot of portals to carry you around different places, but also you can fly around in the world. I developed a uh, flight uh, navigation system uh, that doesn't make people sick or whatever. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it makes it so you can just fly freely through this vast labyrinth that's about 450 meters across and, and interact with the different creatures and get to know them. And that's, uh, yeah, there's another blur. This is one of the ones I think this one's name is Uncle Billy, and uh, Uncle Billy has uh, these uh, transparent uh, areas that refract the background and stuff. Uh, a trivial detail, but um, not trivial to, to develop. <laughs> the uh, the refraction in VR is is a tough one to pull off. Anyway, um, that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Kevin. Amazing, beautiful work. Uh, Kevin, I think it's also your work is in uh, the Museum of Other Realities also, right? You had an exhibition in that experience? Yes. Uh, yes, my, my work is uh, available. Uh, you can see it in the Museum of Other Realities. Uh, Devalea Rupanam is the name of the exhibit. It's a big, big space in the, in the museum. And also my other pieces, Blortasia is, is available on Steam and, uh, and Zen Parade, I think is still available for the Oculus Go, but um, I haven't checked on that for a while. <laughs> and hopefully I'll, I'll get, find something to do with Anandala. And I'm really curious if anybody has any suggestions for uh, ways to exhibit it, I'm, I'm really looking for somewhere to exhibit it. Um, so any, any ideas or, or connections you guys can make, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Can you add awesome. Can you add comments to the um, the, the web page to the meetup? Yeah, yeah. I think we'll yeah we'll put um we'll put uh comments into the meetup page underneath uh, with all the links and everything. All right. Uh, so next we got Kishore. Come on down, buddy. Great. Thanks, DJ. Thanks for arranging all of this. Hi, everyone. Um. So as some of you may know, I used to run a space called VR Bar in Dumbo. Um, these are some pictures of the space. We did an amazing renovation um, and had a beautiful 5,000 square foot space. We were about to set up that huge bar back there and everything, but then of course COVID hit. And so uh, I've closed the space. Um, unfortunately, um, we were featured on a CNBC episode um, that's actually being re-aired right now. Um, and I'll send you guys some links if you want to see it. It's pretty amazing. I think it's a great way to set up a VR space. Um, we had these carpets that delineated the 10 foot by 10 foot area for each person, which was pretty amazing and looked pretty nice in my opinion. Um, we have moved some of this stuff to a space in Jersey City with, through the Brand Experience Lab um, that um, we may work with David Paul and Chuck on. Um, and then also uh, we've transitioned some of VR bar to online uh, where we're both re renting out headsets um, and then also teaching classes. We mainly been teaching classes to younger children, um, seven to 10 year olds and teaching them Swift. But then we were also doing some web development not with um, our nonprofit in Brownsville. If anyone's interested in that, um, I'll provide some links later. Um, and we're happy to work with others on teaching classes or um, if people are interested in specific classes, 
um, we're happy to teach them. And speaking of which, um, we there's a few things with Tilt Brush here. Um, one that recently developed is yesterday or the day before, Rendever um, released a multiplayer version of Tilt Brush called Multi Brush that works on the Quest through Side Quest, and it's amazing. It's also a really great way of teaching classes in Tilt Brush. Um, we've talked to Will about it before, and we've talked to some other creators that are both here and um, just generally known for Tilt Brush. And they're very open to teaching Tilt Brush classes. We can have up to eight students, and it's pretty amazing. But the main reason for this slide here is um, we introduced 20,000 people to high end VR, VR bar using Tilt Brush. We kind of perfected a three minute tutorial that with which we were able to take an eight year old or a 60 year old or anyone in between and uh, really just onboard them into VR. We started with showing them the controller, having them immediately paint and then walk through their painting and see the grid around them um, with the Vive. And we showed them where the carpet ended. And it was really, really powerful. And it took us three minutes. We were able to take people that knew nothing about VR and they were very comfortable. We got a lot of good feedback. So we've made a video showing how we did that so that other people can potentially copy it or use that for their benefit. And I'll provide a link later so you can see that online. Um, it was great. Uh, it was super powerful. Um, I also um, last year presented our AR platform at this same meetup that was in person. Um, it's called Violet. And um, uh, TJ, you can go to the next slide. And so um, that picture on the left is us at um, Art Basel, where we first presented this and showed this. And uh, we debuted an app called Kaleida Studio. Um, and, and basically, um, our app is made to be as seamless and simple as possible. And it was largely meant to augment wall art. And so with these amazing pieces by Kaleida Studio, as soon as you hold up our app on your phone to one of these pieces, they animate and they do amazing things. Um, my business partner, Julie Gratz, um, created some of these pieces and then um, found 20 other artists to create amazing pieces. And all of the work is incredible. Um, and we've also started to white label the platform and TJ can go to the next slide. Thank you. And so one of the white labels we, um, one of the companies we worked with to white label it is the Brownville, Brownsville Community Justice Center. It's a nonprofit in Brownsville that's largely there to help the community. Um, Brownsville has one of the lowest high school graduation rates and they have a lot of crime. They've been hit really hard by COVID. Um, and we've been working that with them to make a white label app for them called Brownsville Live. It'll be live in the app stores in a week or two. And they're, um, both businesses and venues and the projects in Brownsville will have markers that tell people to download the app um, with the QR code. And as soon as they point the app at some of these images and different things in the community, they're able to see the students work animated and um, presented in different ways. It's both, uh, there's music that the students created, there's web pages, there's um, videos that they've created. Um, and then they've also worked with some of the businesses to co-promote them. And so there, it's been pretty powerful and we're excited to get it out in the community and see how people react. And it's, it's pretty incredible to work with the young people and then show them um, what's possible. It's, it's been very powerful on both ends. And then um, most recently with, within the Kaleida Studio app, um, we started um, working with this exhibit, Not Another Second. It's an amazing exhibit. If you're in the New York City area, I highly recommend you see it. It's open until the end of May. They just extended it. Um, it's about 12 seniors who are LGBTQ seniors who came out 20 to 30 years ago. And it was pretty controversial when most of them came out. And they talk about their struggles. They're these beautiful portraits um, of all of them. They're full size, like five foot tall portraits of a lot of them. And again, when you hold up the Clyde Studio app to these portraits, you get a one-on-one -on -one interview with the um, person in the portrait. And it's a really intimate, powerful um, interviews explaining parts of their struggle and some of the social impact causes that they helped with. Um, it, it's just, I, honestly, we didn't have that much of a big part in it. We mainly just did the augmented reality. The exhibit itself is beautiful. It's in this senior living community center 
um, that's pretty amazing. Um, and I, I can't recommend it enough. We're just lucky to be chosen to work on this. And it was written up in Cool Hunting and New York Times and like dozens of publications. Time Out New York picked it as one of the best museum exist exhibitions to see, especially during COVID. So um, if you can see it, I recommend it. It's not another second.com and I'll post links for that as well. And then, um, yep, everything, uh, all these links are on vrbar.nyc slash nyvr. Um, and uh, also we started um, tweeting and Instagramming some of the best VR experiences and there are links to that on um, NYVR and we're gonna constantly update that. Um, and it's kind of like a, just a curated list of experiences. We're happy to take um, any recommendations as well. Um, along with um, Tilt Brush open sourcing, which they did recently, um, we've been working with and uh, kind of seeing a lot of developers fork Tilt Brush and uh, one of the greatest experiences, Multibrush, what I just, which I just mentioned, but also OpenBrush is another open source fork of Tilt Brush. I think we're going to see a lot of this, and we'll highlight that in our Instagram and uh, Twitter as well. Um, so that's about it, and uh, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Kishore. That's an all amazing work. All right, uh, next we got Michael and Robin. Come on down. Um, hello, uh, I'm Robin uh, White, and this is my partner, Michael, and um, we um, are our digital producers at Media Combo, where we develop customized experiences for arts and cultural organizations. Uh, last year, we collaborated with the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center in East Hampton to create Trace and Paint, the Pollock Krasner Studio in Virtual Reality. Visitors to the studio location where Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner painted their abstract expressionist masterpieces um, can't really see any of these works in the studio because all of them are in museums and private collections all over the world. And um, so the intention behind the, um, the VR experience was uh, to bring the paintings back into the studio so that visitors uh, in East Hampton could have you know, a deeper appreciation of what was really created in this historic place. So uh, the other thing about the VR experience is that uh, it does create greater accessibility to the studio, enabling people who can't travel and also those with mobility issues to um, visit, uh, visit the site virtually. It's a free roam VR experience that transports visitors into the studio where these abstract expressionist painters, Pollock and Krasner, created their mid 20th century masterpieces. Michael? Yeah, we used photogrammetry to scan and create a one-to-one -one model of the artist studio. And uh, computer graphics transform the model to realistically represent the way it looked in the late 40s and 50s when Pollock painted his most iconic paintings in the draft of Young Kid Barn. We placed blue poles and other of his masterpiece paintings back onto the floor right where they were painted. And using archival audio, brought Pollock himself back to speak about his uh, techniques and his inspiration and intention. Uh, the studio was updated with heat, electricity, and given interior walls shortly before Pollock died in a car accident in 1956. And Lee Krasner then took over the studio. The second chapter of the story takes visitors to the bright, updated version of the studio, and we see her paintings on the walls where she painted them. And we hear Lee talk about what mattered to her as an artist. Um, so uh, we we uh, we had this experience at uh, East Hampton at the studio this past summer. Um, which was able to be open and have, you know, many fewer people at a time go to the studio. And then after they visit the, the physical studio, they can actually, they walk over to the house where Pollock and Krasner lived. And it was there that um, they had set up four Quest headsets so, for people to take, to have the experience. And um, 
So we were doing some visitor surveys to see what it was like, and it was really encouraging and very heartening to hear what people had to say. Just for example, <laughs> um, the virtual reality program made you feel like you were right there when he made the paintings. There's no greater way to connect with the artist unless you visit him in the studio when he made them. So it was, it turned out to be really, really successful. And DJ, thanks so much for giving us the opportunity to, um, to talk about it and share it. And I know we also want to um, give some credits now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that we were helped by the team. Uh, the Glimpse group did the uh, photogrammetry and the 3D models. Uh, Lisa Lakshina did the uh, experience design. David Goshfeld was our uh, lead developer uh, and programmer. And uh, he had some great sound work done by um, the, the chapter, chapter four. four. So we were very, we had a great group of people help us make this happen. So thank awesome. You. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take your time. All right. Now we got Mr. Will. Come on down. Here I am. Oh, there you go. How's everybody? There you go. Uh, so how's everybody doing out there? Give, give me some claps. Give me some. Give me some emojis. Uh, like, I, yeah. So, like DJ said, I'm Will Roberts. I am uh, the founder of Augmented Pictures, um, a VR, uh, AR company based in New York City. Uh, my background is in 3D animation and, inter and interactive art. Um, and I can. And uh, next slide, DJ. And this is a project that um, was birthed out of um, some insights and some experiences kind of kind of from my vocation as a, um, a person that studies African culture, African American culture, and a pedag and the pedagogy of storytelling. Um, next slide. Um, so this is back in 2014. I had my DK, my DK2 headset floating around the metaverse. I ended up on this 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 like beautiful colorful part of the metaverse and i met a guy named musa musa said musa told me that he was lost and he was looking for his tribe and his his tribe was called the akea tribe the akea tribe is also known as um the as one tribe or or the akea people next slide dj so one of the things that he told me that he was lost but he also went into this duffel bag and gave me a bunch of artifacts or 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 things that came from his tribal people and asked me can you help me uh find my people so this was the one so yeah so this was one of the one of the first artifacts that i pulled out of the bag um and i'm trying to break it down into the different aspects of this queendom um going from uh the queen herself going from the architecture and the tools um to the sport that's played in this um in this in this tribe and also going from like what they look like now if we slide so so yeah so here on the left on the left is uh queen candace queen candace is a part of, of a lineage of warrior queens um she ruled uh well musa told me that she, she ruled this this a uh, kingdom for thousands and thousands of years in the metaverse and, uh, and over to the right is um oops sorry is, Nope. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. My <laughs> over to the right is is a is a statue of of of, of a Deca. Deca is the first uh, uh, Candace in this line of um, warrior queens. Right. And here on this slide is um, uh, the Mawu sisters. The Mawu sisters, all three of them are are seen as the queens or the sisters of a sun and moon in this in this in this part of the metaverse um uh they both all of them have have some kind of emblem that that kind of relates to them uh, that looks like a sun or a moon but also they look very distinct in their look um look and feel dj there you go yep uh, there we go 
Okay, and next, um, so we're looking at the uh, uh, the warrior queen. Before she became the queen, she also built um, armor. And the armor that she built looked similar to this. It looks kind of Aztec and also kind of uh, uh, West African, this like, kind of West African mask look. And also, so on the, also on the left is uh, Shango. Shango is a, uh, it's a liquid based armor that can bend um, with time. Also, when you look at uh, bending as a, as, as a medium, so looking at bending as, you know, uh, bending time, bending um, the, the, the different elements of, of reality or this reality that we're in right now. So, okay, next slide. So this is the architecture uh, kind of piece of it. So like, as I started to go, he gave me pictures of architecture. So this is the architecture uh, piece. Um, I mean, this is a piece of architecture that he said that this is a home of a 20 family, uh, what, what kind of what he kind of described as a condo or uh, a high rise. Um, here in the front, there is a pyramid that you walk through and once you go through that pyramid, that's where uh, the magic happens. I haven't been in this place yet, but I'm definitely gonna take people on a visit once I get my keys. Next slide. And, and this is uh, the Akea uh, Towers. The Akea Towers are also built um, uh, built as structures of, of living and also like this creative space. Um, they're pretty much levitating. Uh, they look like they've kind of made of wood, but also they're made of, uh, of, of some kind of other, other material that we're not fond of in the physical reality, but they're in the meta, in, in this metaverse. And there's actually just, um, yeah, just crazy to see these things. Next slide. Oh uh, yeah, so so yeah, so now I want to kind of talk about the tools that they use to build this world, and also, uh, yeah, yeah. So this next tool is all is also like a glove, but also like from our standpoint, it's kind of like a gauntlet. And on this gauntlet, on the back of the gauntlet, there is um, this like sphere or, or this marble shaped uh, element that actually like uh, it uses the the internal powers of yourself to bend these elements like uh, stone fire, water, brick, or what, you know, the, all the, all the elements that kind of, uh, that grounds us in the physical world, there's a meta equivalent in this, in this verse. Yep. And yeah, so now, so yes, now I want to talk about the sport. So every, every civilization has a, has a, a element of entertainment. So I want to talk about Vala. Vala is a sport that, that has actually played in this uh, this ancient civilization, um, it's played on a basketball court size arena, three on three. Um, it's a it's a it's a spatial game, so everybody has their own space, and everybody's like bending those elements I'll talk about: uh, a thunderstone, fire, and brick. Um, so when you look at yeah, so this is that uh, this uh, gauntlet style uh, glove that people wear in this game, and also it's the same glove that is worn. Um, to actually build these uh, uh, these structures. So when you mix those, mix these, th th mix these, this kind of, this, this kind of architecture uh, bending element, and also this nonviolent uh, sport, you have um, this awesome things that come by that, that comes up. And so yeah, so like modern day, so some of the offspring of this culture has per per what do you say permutated across the internet in different forms. So, so this is uh, yeah. So this is the Kea tribe in a VR chat. So we are kind of everywhere and they're in different pockets. There are different uh, elements of of this tribe um, all across the internet. But this is a, a group of them in VR chat. And this is um, this is a screenshot. Um, so I have some uh, video too. But yes, but but this is a screenshot of of the sport being played. Uh, so now it's been played um, in, a, in a beta form in a competitive nature in uh, Harlem, Brooklyn, in the Bronx by kids of, from like 10 years old to high school kids competing in this, uh, this, like, this like physical but virtual uh, sport. 
And uh, these are the two uh, projects that I'm working on. They both, um, they, but they, they both kind of fed out of each other. Uh, I mean, fed, fed. They were birthed out of each other. Uh, one, one, like one is a competitive uh, spatial game that's played in a basketball court size arena. There's actually it's a it's a fitness component to it, but also is also a part of um, uh, it's 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 done in the same uh, world as BHX 1619. BHX 1619 is a so there's an element of narrative um, that's going to be on the Oculus Quest, but also um, me looking at it. How can I tell the histories of African people, African American people, and VR, and make it make it accessible? So yeah, yeah, so right now I'm building a team of people. Not really a. It's more of um, uh, uh, a compilation of people with different elements or or, or different skill sets. So uh, historians, 3D artists, animators, um, researchers to put together almost like a wiki verse of African and African American culture for VR. Uh, we don't have that yet. Um, my background, so my undergrad degree was, was in African studies and the pedagogy storytelling and I'm a, I'm a you know, VR artist and I'm an ex-athlete, ex-D1 athlete. So I kind of mash up my whole life to make art that people can like uh, either, either c compete or you can learn about uh, African history, which is world history at the same time. So that is my talk. And if you know of anybody that's interested or you are interested, um, so BHX 1619 is where you can find out the information of that project. And also you can buy art. So we're on Patreon too. And um, uh, playvala.com, that's where you can uh, find out more about this uh, spatial, spatial uh, esports uh, style game, VR esports style game. Um, and I think that is my talk. Thank you, National Art Club. Thank you, DJ, for putting this thing together. And thank you for all the artists that showed up. Y'all just keep making art. And the people that aren't artists, keep supporting living artists cause we, cause, because we need to live. <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> Great job. Thank you so much, Will. All right, last but not least. <laughs> Thanks, Elvabet. <laughs> you, here's your bond. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so my name is Yvonne Grinkovich. Can you guys hear me okay? I've had audio problems in the past, yeah? Yes, we can hear you. Good. Oh, good, good. Thank you. <laughs> so um, thanks so much to DJ uh, for, for letting me be a part of this. That was amazing. Uh, amazing talks um so this is it, it's difficult to follow all of this <laughs> but um but thank you thanks for inviting me um my name is yvonne good coverage so i'm the founder of animation nights new york and any exchange and also a co-owner of animation for adults um i think many of you might be familiar with animation nights new york and the best of fest uh we've had we've showcased a lot of your work in our vr showcase we've been involved in the uh sort of vr scene for well since the first festival um so animation nights new york is a monthly screening event um and then also an anim uh, an annual festival held in october um any exchange is an initiative uh is about uh, connecting people to people. We're really focused on connecting creators to opportunities, utilizing our festival as a vehicle. Um, and then our any virtual events, well, that's sort of something that, that happened uh, end of last year. It was sort of a hard pivot to um, bring our events uh, to the web XR space. So we, we're utilizing uh, uh, the Mozilla Hubs platform after doing a little bit of research through the pandemic and kind of jumping into 3JS and A-Frame myself uh, and uh, JavaScript to start brushing up on that. I, um, I in looking at WebXR again and realizing what Mozilla Hubs has or Mozilla has done with it, it just seemed like a natural fit. And, and uh, as was mentioned before, um, the accessibility factor was really something that um, was kind of perfect for our audience. Um, so, we curate and connect. Uh, we, uh, wow, I'm like trying to read, but I wrote. <laughs> we connect creators to opportunity. Um, we obviously curate projects for exhibition. Um, it's what's sort of been our goal from the very beginning. We're trying to 
um, show the best quality work from all around the world. You know, we're focused on short form animation content, and that's both traditional, uh, digital, and XR content. And um, we've had a lot of growth since the very beginning. You know, we started out as like a, a 30 person screening event, <laughs> and now we have a, um, a quite large uh, mailing list of, you know, over 25,000 and, and an even larger platform uh, with animation for adults. But we're really, our goal is to showcase uh, work, create opportunity for people and just sort of bring people together uh, under one roof, like a many, many of the organizations are doing. Um, we were able to, you know, as you know, <laughs> sort of preaching the choir here a bit, but, you know, uh, the online platform really, the silver lining is that it creates an opportunity for all of us to come together no matter where we are. So, you know, we're hoping uh, and focusing on these platforms that we can bring our international uh, animators together. We can connect animators with developers, you know, bringing them in early in the project pipeline. Um, and with Andy Exchange, really focus on uh, mixer events that, you know, are, are part of these conversations. So we're, you know, building rooms around uh, artist work and, and really just trying to bring people together in that space and we have from the beginning um yeah, next slide please uh this is uh well just a little uh <laughs> our virtual cinema which we do actually premiere not premiere is not the word we showcase a few um films in and then also our previews uh, and then we also offer uh, video on demand a limited video on demand of our the content for our monthly screening events we're hoping to do more. And then this is a, a little shot of one of our players, our uh, VOD players. Next slide. So we really, uh, you know, we've had over 15,000 projects submitted from all around the world and uh, both uh, traditional 2D short film and uh, and also VR projects. And there's just so much talent, as you know, and, and you know, really want to just uh, create as much opportunity for people as possible and really like, you know, help people find one another. <laughs> so next slide, please. Um, we are utilizing the uh, WebXR space as both uh, a way to showcase 360 work, as you know, um, or may not know, uh, Hubs is in WebXR has sort of a, a, a built in um, way to show 360 content in the echo rectangular, rectangular format um, and it works pretty fairly seamlessly um, and you can also because it's open source, you can fork it and um, sort of integrate your own um, uh, players and components. So it's pretty cool. And then we can create, you know, these uh, gallery spaces with with stills from the, the filmmakers work and build rooms around that work. Um, and it's been pretty cool. Yeah. This is uh, more of the space. <laughs> um, it's been uh, well, I'll talk, there's a slide that uh, a little bit later, but um, for instance, we uh, right now as part of our Andy Exchange Initiative, you know, we have uh, these animator interview series that we do with AFA, our, our sibling organization, and, you know, we're building rooms around those interviews. So it almost becomes like, um, like a museum installation, you know what I mean? You can go in, you can listen to the interview, you can look at someone's story portfolio or maybe a portfolio that you wouldn't necessarily go to first online and um, sort of look at that listen to the interview and then pop into the virtual theater that's connected for them to check out one of their featured uh, screenings you know and then obviously it gives a space for people who have just seen the uh, the films to to come together and chat um, the reality of it is and I think you probably a lot of, oh yeah here's AFA so we've actually had a quite a large and growing audience of you know like a hundred thousand uh, visitors per month and and it's it's keeps on growing um so it's really been a nice incentive for uh for you know sponsorship and you know connections with people who are like looking for additional exposure and you know hoping it'll it'll help to um sort of, sort of kick start and charge um this any exchange in, initiative connecting talent to opportunities right you can see the connection there um yeah and that's yeah so here's yeah an example of some of the um podcasts and uh or some of the interview series that we've done with afa we've been doing them for quite a while now um a little ca more casually at the beginning but it's something that we're continuing to do now just as another way to uh highlight and focus on uh, artists work next slide please and we have uh finally we have 
a uh, festival happening uh, October. Those dates are kind of tentative, but it looks like uh, everything is pointing to that um, happening on those days. Um, but we have, uh, you know, as per usual, we'll have a VR showcase and we'll have uh, two uh, traditional content and um, juried selection and, and who knows, like the sky's the limit. I mean, we can do a ton of stuff in VR. Regarding in-person events, you know, we will see what happens. We definitely don't want to be, um, you know, bringing people into unsafe situations, especially because, you know, we have popular events and we, <laughs> we didn't want to you know pack people in together it wouldn't be the right thing to do at this time um but anyway i was going to say before i mean one thing that i'm realizing about WebXR is um how much uh we are sort of indoctrinating people into the multi-user space whether or not they even have headsets right so i think that um platforms like web WebXR are a terrific like gateway <laughs> drug to other platforms and opportunities and and anyway um you all would like to work together um i think there's uh i would be i would love to talk to you about it and you could just basically plug into what we're doing you know and and then um have these web pages which is what they are um uh, point to other platforms and, and other opportunities so we're, we're happy to do that for you and that's what we're here for so my background is uh painting and animation so that's what's sort of driving all of this so we're here for artists i think that's that <laughs> awesome cool Thank cool <laughs> big round of applause for y yvonne and a n n y and oh that, look at all those clubs that's I it i know isn't that that's the best right <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, it feels like good. <laughs> You're like, all right. yourself now. Yeah. So that's it. We made it through successfully. And uh, once again, I just want to thank everyone involved in uh, tonight's show with Lev and the National Arts Club, all the performers or presenters. Um, and that's it. We're a little bit late with our presentations, but the space will remain open here. And I highly encourage everyone to head to the back portals and uh, check out uh, Darcy's Two Worlds. And uh, hopefully we will be having another event next month. Uh, so keep an eye out for the announcement. Uh, so thank you very much. That's that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 That's awesome.